in just a couple of weeks, we're going to be celebrating the, the largest holiday season of the year. Uh, that holiday is Christmas, of course. I was at Mars Hill a few weeks ago, and I asked myself, what's the greatest thing about Christmas? Guess what the overwhelming response was? Who said presents? Presents. You're right, brother. <coughs> overwhelming response. Presents. Now, let, let me think about that for just a second, okay? How many of you got a notable Christmas present from your grandparents? If you ever got a really, really nice Christmas present from your grandparents, raise your hand. Okay, now keep that thought in mind, okay? Keep that thought in mind. When I was nine years old, we moved to High Springs, Florida, which is north central Florida, just out of Gainesville. My grandparents lived in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, and every year at Christmas, we'd make an 11, 12-hour trek up I-75 and across uh, 64 to get to uh, Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. It was a long trip, long trip. And, and, and every year on, on I-75 heading north, my mom would always say, Ted, she'd say, and you know my mom, she'd say, now kids, Whatever you get, act like you appreciate it and you enjoy it. Okay, okay. Every year she told us that, several times. I don't know how many times she tells us that, but on the way we get in from the, uh, from the rest area, she said, now whatever you get for Christmas, act like you appreciate it and you enjoy it. So, okay. Well, we knew what we were getting, so I mean, it wasn't like it was a mystery. Uh, to say I was a little challenging as a child would probably be an understatement. Uh, I was a, a little mischievous, okay? Uh, Amen. That's right. Brother. My uh, my mom and dad they were disciplinarians, and I got more discipline than my brother, my two brothers, and my sister combined. So I was I was their thorn in the side, I guess, growing up. Uh, I, I kept them on their toes. And when mom said that, after the third or fourth time, I thought, okay, we're gonna act excited. We're gonna act excited. I can't wait. Christmas morning, we're at Mama's house and. And we hear him knock on the door and say, it's Christmas morning. And so we wake up upstairs. And you know, most kids, they run down the steps to see what's under the tree and everything. We didn't because we knew it was under the tree. We knew for a fact what was under the tree. It was always the same thing. We plodded down the stairs. And they had to say, hurry, hurry, hurry. And we might take two steps at a time. But we didn't get any hurt. We got down there. And I had already figured out how excited I was going to be. So when I opened up my present, I knew what it was. Uh, Joe, that's my brother's name, I said, Joe, look, underwear. <laughs> it's always the same thing. Two, three packs of Fruit of the Looms and one six-pack of tube socks. The only thing that changed every year was the size. Okay? <laughs> that's the only thing that changed. It was always drawers and tube socks. I said, Joe, look, underwear. I tore the package open. I held it up. I said, check it out. You can play hide-and-seek, move it back and forth. <laughs> you can put it on your head and look like Pharaoh. <laughs> you can take and shoot it. About that time, I had a religious experience. <laughs> I did. I was raptured. I don't know if you believe in the rapture or not, but I was raptured. And I came down in the next room with my daddy holding me. And he put his finger in my face, and his finger in my face looked about that big around. And he said, boy, if you ever do that again. And so we walked back out, and this time I was a little less exuberant about the presence, but I said, thank you, ma'am. I'll thank you, Papa, for the whitey tighties. And uh, <laughs> It was so hard to get excited about drawers and socks. Now, some of y'all may have got some, I mean, some of you raised your hands, you really got a notable present. Maybe you got a car, maybe you, you got a, uh, over uh, Mars Hill, one little girl got a car and one, one, one fella got a cruise from grandparents. I'm thinking, yeah, I got drawers and socks. Uh, that, that's pretty cool. I, I kind of like that idea. Uh, it's, it's hard to get excited about some things, but I'll tell you what, there's other things we can get excited about. Amen? Amen? One of those things that we can get excited about is making a difference in people's lives. Amen. And I'm not talking about minimal difference. Guys, I'm not talking about different camo patterns. Girls, I'm not talking about different nail color. I'm talking about huge difference. I'm talking daylight and dark, uh, 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 heaven and hell, life and death. We can make differences like this in people's lives, and I can get excited about that. Uh, I got home one day and Penny said, that's my wife, she said, Will? I said, Will? She said, Will? And I'm thinking, I'm supposed to know something, but I don't. <laughs> I said, Well? She said, What do you think? I don't know. She said, I got my hair trimmed. Oh, oh, yes, you did. That's beautiful. That is so, I love that. 
yeah, right. You know, uh, that was one of those minor differences. Now, guys, uh, when you get married, if you're not married yet, when you get married, if you hear her say something about going to the haircutting place, put that down. Make a mental note when she gets back. Tell her how pretty her hair is. Uh, that's one of those. To, to me, it was a minor difference, <clears throat> folks. When we preach, it's not a minor difference. Amen. Amen. When we preach the gospel, we can make a great, a great difference in people's lives as servants of God. That's not only a possibility, that is our mission, is to make a difference in people's lives. Uh, I know the Lord will make a way for me. The Lord has said, go teach the word, preach the word to all the world. Uh, Matthew 18, 19, and 20, that the brother read. Uh, folks, that's all about a huge change. I mean, that is a total <coughs> change from hell and heaven. There's nothing, I mean, there's nothing close in comparison to the two of them. We're talking huge changes. I can get excited about making a difference in people's lives. And when you preach the word, if it's going to change people's lives, you should be excited about it. And guess what? Excitement breeds excitement. If you're excited when you preach, people are going to be excited when they listen. If you get up there and turn to Matthew 28, 19, 20, it means what it says, says what it means. You know, uh, they're going to be just as excited as we are. We've got to be excited when we preach God's Word. I can be excited about the opportunity to preach the saving gospel of Jesus Christ to a dying world. Uh, I want you to put yourself in a situation that you are a medical scientist and you have just discovered a cure for cancer. Through your research, through your work, through your study, through, through all your time spent, you have just come up with a research, uh, the uh, cure for cancer. Would you be a little excited about sharing that with the world? Not just hit like this. Okay. Right. Folks, we have something better than that. Amen? Amen? And we need to be excited about the opportunity to preach this gospel to the dying world. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, God chose the foolishness of preaching to save the world. Amen. Folks, that's us. That's our mission. That's our calling. That's our goal. I like what Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Be ready to preach the word at all times. Reprove, rebuke, resort, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's us. That's what we do as Christians. That's what we do. Uh, some of you guys aren't, aren't old enough yet, but you will be. You're going to go to class reunions, and you're going to be standing around the wall. And, and, and guys, if, if I'm not right, just tell me about this, okay? <clears throat> People can be standing around, you're going to be drinking a drink, Coke, something like it, punch, whatever, and, and, and eating some crackers or whatever. And somebody went to school with you 10 or 12 years ago, they're going to bump you and say, hey, what do you do now? And they don't really care what you do. What they're saying is, how much money do you make? Okay? Mm -hmm. And so that you say, well, I'm a school teacher. Oh, okay. They put him in the $30,000 bracket. Okay? Somebody says, I'm an engineer. They put him in the $60,000 bracket. Now, when somebody asks me that, but I haven't seen a long time, I tell them, yeah. What, what do you do, Tim? I'm a heart surgeon. <laughs> That's what they do. They laugh too. But that is what I am. Amen. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, doesn't a heart surgeon examine the heart, figure out what the bad part is, try to get the bad part out, replace it with the good stuff, and make it work better and repair that heart? Folks, that's what preachers are. We're heart surgeons. And we need to be excited about that opportunity. The world is full of people that need heart surgery. Amen? Amen. And it's up to us. Now, I understand that the uh, percentage, and I didn't do my homework on this, so I don't know exactly what it is. Somebody else may know what it is. But the overwhelming majority of the world, overwhelming vast majority of the world, is not Christian. Okay? There, there, there is such a high percentage of folks that are unsaved, it's not funny at all. Now, we can look at that and say, see, the odds are against us. So we can look at that and say, look at the opportunity that's out there for us. If everybody was saved, we wouldn't have a job to save people, but everybody's not. There are people out there that are lost, and we have the opportunity to preach this gospel to those folks. We have the opportunity to, to, to preach the gospel make a difference in people's lives. We have the opportunity to preach this, this saving message. And I also can get excited about the opportunity to spend heaven with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, that's no small thing. Uh, when I say something about heaven and somebody passing away and going to heaven or this, that, and the other, and when I, if I ever say anything about that, if it's ever brought up in Wednesday night class, somebody always brings up the debate, well, now, Brother Tim, do you go straight to heaven when you die or do you go to the waiting place? You know what? It depends on if you ask uh, Gus Nichols or Guy in Woods, and, and you can ask it from one. You know what? I really don't care. If, if I'm waiting to go to heaven, that's all right with me. If I go straight to heaven, that's even better. 
As long as I'm going, I don't care how long it takes me to get there. Amen? Amen. And I can get excited about being in heaven. That's our mission. That's our goal. That's us. That's what we do. Some things are hard to get excited about. Some things we need to get excited about. And spreading the message of Jesus Christ is something that we need to be excited about. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you for your time so much. I uh, appreciate you listening. Uh, a fellow told me one time, a long time ago, he said, are you excited about preaching? I said, yeah. He said, well, if it doesn't show when you preach, nobody else is going to be excited either. Amen. So when you preach, be excited. Thank Amen. you very much.